welcome back everybody to the Sam's Report. It is August 3rd. August 3rd. This is going to be a good episode. Um, fully recommend you stick around all the way until the questions because you'll understand why here in a minute. Um, but big week for Microsoft. They launched this guy. This guy. This is the Microsoft Surface Go. It is the tiniest Surface ever. Is It's tiny. I mean, it's it's tiny. I, I will tell you, um, I had a, a conversation with somebody yesterday. And I was like, you know what? If this thing had a core i5 in here, I know it would get hot. If, it, if they get past the thermal issues, this this thing could be like my favorite machine ever. Um, the, the the size of this thing is, I mean, look at this. This is my hand that you can, you can see. It's like I can almost palm this thing. It is a tiny little computer that has everything you love and know about a surface it's it's got it, it take a surface pro uh put it in the dryer crank the heat up as high as you can and everything shrinks the size the display um the keyboard the price the performance the battery life everything shrinks but it, it's nice it's not it's it's nice um I've written a bunch about this, a couple videos on the channel, I, I played Fortnite, um, I did an unboxing, I don't have my full review yet, that will come next week, the only reason is I got this thing on Monday and um, basically had about two, maybe two and a half maximum days with this thing, and it's just not enough time, point being that uh, I ran 3D Mark and got a really low score, and Microsoft said, hey, that doesn't maybe doesn't sound right, let's, let's see if you've got all the latest drivers and everything, um, and so th there's some things that need to be worked out and some kinks. And so that's why I don't like to rewrite write my v reviews real quick. And plus, you know, I t typically use these things. Um, I'm going to go to New York here in a couple weeks and I might just take this thing only. Um, well, maybe not. I don't know. I'm, I'm like, like this, this form fact. I love this form factor. I've actually got the other keyboards here too, because they're, they're very soft and delicious too. Um, actually, I'm going to New York nothing exciting it's about petri related stuff but i think i'm going to take just the surface pro instead of the surface book uh, because i i love this form factor i think it's nice it's nice um that being said guys so surface go available starting at 399 i i would my my struggle with recommending the 399 model is that slower storage this has the 128 gig ssd which has faster storage and the performance is already like eh. and so if, if you coupled it with slower storage i'd be really worried that's that's the biggest downfall about this thing is this intel pentium gold processor it's that that is the crux of the argument the battery life is not great um i'm getting around around five hours under pretty decent use so you might be able to stretch that out a little bit longer but the performance here is great for consumption tasks things like netflix things like for watching youtube videos things for any consumption watching a podcast uh, writing emails that type of stuff don't try to edit videos on here do not try to edit photos don't try to game on here and that's the biggest argument here um that's going to be kind of the crux here because Microsoft doesn't want you to compare this thing to an iPad and I don't know why they, they get really whatever. Um, here's my recommendation. If you need a productivity based tablet, this is a great choice. This is a very good choice. You, you'd be very happy with this thing. If you were looking for just a casual entertainment tablet, I think you'd be better off with an iPad. Uh, the iPad just has better apps. It, it's better for media, pure media consumption, but this thing is better for office. This thing is better for getting getting stuff done. Um, that, I think that's the best way to describe like who should buy this and when and for what. Granted, you can watch Netflix on here, no problem, but what, I, what, what it lacks is like that casual gaming aspect that you can just go to the app store and find a whole bunch of games and just screw around. That, that's what's missing on this type of a device. That being said, um, I mean, listen to that. It, it doesn't feel cheap. A lot of th a lot of times when you get down to this price point, you kind of get like a cheap plasticky piece of crap. This doesn't feel like that. Um, it, it's it is surfaced through and through. This is this is something that you know if you buy it and people look at it, they're not going to laugh at me like, oh my god, he's using a cheap piece of crap at, at Starbucks. This is a this is the real deal, and a lot of people seem to love it. And I I totally understand why. The the size of it is nice. Um, it weighs like a pound, 1.15 pounds. And so you can just toss this thing in a backpack and totally forget that it's there. Um, if you have a, a modest sized purse, ladies, this thing will fit in there very easily. Um, I, men, if you have a purse, it will fit in there easily too. I don't think it would fit in a fanny pack if you're going to Disney World. But um, 
it's nice. It's nice. I think Microsoft did a good job here. Um, I can I can also tell you that Microsoft has already sold tens of thousands of these things. Uh, I know that for a fact. And so I think it's going to do well. I think it's going to do well for Microsoft. I think for in the corporate space too, for those first line workers, Microsoft calls them, this is a good machine. I mean, you can imagine if you have people out in the field and you got to understand, especially like in consulting world or whatever, and you want your, your employee to look good. Like you don't want to give them some piece of junk, like them walking around with one of these things, walking down the aisle, just, you know, you could, you can't do much worse or much better. I should say much worse. That would be uh, the, the opposite of what I was trying to get. So Surface Go, totally recommend, uh, you know, if this is your jam. Now there's a couple things you need to be aware of here. First off, there's a new pin setup here. See how many pins there are on this thing? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Microsoft has a new pin setup for the bottom of the surface here. That's that surface port. Um, interesting. The reason why I bring that up is here is somebody asked, they said, hey, I've got a Surface 3. Can that work? And the answer is no, it can't. Um, it, it won't connect here. You can kind of see, see how that, there's like those pegs. Well, first off, there's only, on this guy, there's only one, two, three, four, five, six. So whatever Microsoft has up its sleeve, which I have a couple guesses, but I'm not going to dive down that yet. Um, this thing provides more bandwidth to this guy. It absolutely does. You can also see the different peg set up here that blocks at like the actual connection. And so if you look here, see how this is way over here and the blue ones are way in here. Th these pegs do not allow you to actually connect um, the keyboard to it. So that, that actually blocks it. Now, uh, I fully expect the next gen Surface Pro will be going down the same route, which means that your type covers are not going to be compatible, which is a little odd. A little odd. So uh, I know Microsoft's got a redesign coming up for the Surface Pro. I don't know if we're necessarily going to see that this year. Um, this year might just be a chip refresh. So keep that in mind. Uh, keep that in mind. Uh, moving along here. So Microsoft made Windows 10 Redstone 5 ISOs finally available. So if you've been wanting those to update your machine, you can now go ahead and do that with an ISO. And uh, they've also started rolling out an improved OneDrive for Windows 10. This is going to help with battery life and all that good stuff. And uh, something else that kind of funny that hit the web this week is that Google took a shot at uh, Windows and OS X with a video advertisement, basically just bashing all things uh, Windows. They even showed off some Windows Vista era kind of tragedies, if you will. And th they're trying to drum up that hatred of people had of Windows many years ago. And uh, also with OS X, with the spinning beach ball and all that stuff, and said, hey, you know what? Get a Chromebook instead, because a Chromebook will solve all your problems. Now, granted, uh, Chromebooks very much have their place, and I think they are a threat to Windows, and I think there's a lot of things that Chromebooks do well. There's also a lot of things they don't do well, such as working in a place that doesn't have Wi-Fi. Uh, they are great online machines, but they're not great with apps. Um, the Android app experience isn't great. Right now, you can't even run spell check inside of an Android app on a Chromebook. So uh, there certainly is not out there faults, but basically the idea here is it kind of reminded me of those I'm a PC, I'm a Mac things, and Google is now getting into this. I think Chrome OS is something Microsoft needs to take seriously, and I think they do, and I think they're completely aware of it. And uh, it, it's just funny to watch now that there's another front that Microsoft has to compete against, and it's called a Chromebook, and uh, they're not going anywhere. Google's got the cash flow to make this happen. Their Google apps are, are doing all right, and so all that stuff is going on. Um, I highly recommend you go watch it. So, yep. I highly recommend you go watch that. Uh, a couple other things happening. Bing now lets you make your own itineraries and maps. If that's what, you know, if that's what's been holding you back from Bing Maps, you've now got that functionality. And uh, it's impossible not to talk about Apple as well. Apple hit the mythical $1 trillion mark. And so I guess congrats, but market cap is how they do that. Basically, you take outstanding uh, shares of stock, multiply it by price, and you get a market value. And that all that's good for is if some company wanted to buy Apple, they would need a trillion dollars to do it. Um, and, and so it's a it's a neat milestone, but it doesn't. That's really about it. It doesn't really change anything. And they could drop below trillion today, or they could hit two trillion tomorrow. It's going to make a bunch of people rich in the short term, and that's about all you really need to know about being a trillion dollar company. 
So, yeah, I mean, Microsoft World. This is ever, this is this was it. So, uh, I, I am can can confirm. Ugh, by the way, I am going to ignite. Oh, one other thing here. I, I am going to ignite. So I'm not trying to undersell it. Um, one thing that's not really talked about on here. There's an RFID reader in here. Yeah. Uh, it was in a Microsoft Mechanics video, and so you can actually, well, it reads RFID, which is great for warehouses. So if you're working in a warehouse and you need to, like, read or tag something in and out, you can do it right here. That's not something everybody talks about. So, um, yeah, USB Type-C. Uh, there was a question about how, what, what is this USB Type-C? This is not, definitely not Thunderbolt. So somebody was asking if they could run an external GPU. I... Do not believe so. I believe you absolutely need Thunderbolt for that, not just a Type-C. I mean, technically, I guess the cable will plug in, but you're not going to get that that external GPU advantage. Um, and yes, of course, it does have the headphone jack, which is lovely. There is an LTE variant coming, which I think is going to be big as well for a certain demographic. Um, personally, not so much. I mean, I don't need an LTE Surface Go. But uh, yeah, and by the way, I, I really like the name. I think the Surface Go is a good name because this thing is like grab and go. This is like the, the uh, <laughs> I always think of when somebody says grab and go of what Hampton Inn does is they have these little like lunch bags you can grab on your way out if you're staying there in a hotel that has like an apple and a water. It reminds me of these. They can just put these things up and you can just grab them and go. Um, yeah, it, so Surface Go. I'll have more next week as my final review, but as you can tell, I'm pretty optimistic. Just the big downsides you got to be aware of are battery life and performance, which are huge barriers for a tablet and kumbaya. All right, so let's dive into the questions here, which I promise there'll be something good. Da, 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 da. Um, where is... There was one specific question that I was looking for that I wanted to start off with. Uh, here we go. Question comes from Peter K. It says, I just moved to the States for graduate studies. Welcome, welcome, Peter. And I plan on buying a Surface Book 2, the cheapest version. Do you know when is usually the best time for good deals on Surface hardware? You know what? October. Microsoft's going to have something in October. Uh, I've got a pretty good feeling about what it's going to be. So I would recommend if you're looking to buy new hardware other than the Surface Go, I would wait until October, personally speaking. Um, you know, if it was if I was to buy something and I wanted to make sure I had the best of whatever Microsoft offered at the best value, I would uh, I would I would hold off until uh, early October. Yep. So there you go. Uh, scrolling back up here, uh, DC DTC PSS has Mary Jo fully heard that the Net Surface Pro Karma will be heavily redesigned. I've heard this as well. Intel had a two-in-one project called North Cape which has a very thin bezel on a laptop mode, but if the screen is detached, virtual software bezels will appear, which ignores the touch input around the screen's perimeter. Is it possible for Microsoft to bring this feature to the next-gen Surface Pro? It is absolutely possible. Um, I need to double-check on this, but I'm pretty confident of this. Uh, the hinge, which you can barely see my Surface Book 2 back there, uh, right, that Microsoft made, um, I believe it's based off of Intel's muscle wire technology. So Microsoft and Intel sharing kind of the, that technology is not unheard of. Um, I very much believe that this could be coming from them, and that would not surprise me at all. I mean, they, Microsoft works closely with Intel. They had to for all their hardware, and it would not surprise me. Now, I've heard that that, sur that redesigned Surface Pro may not be coming this year. It might just be a chip update. So I, I don't fully know yet. One person told me that it's not going to be the redesigned device this year. I granted things could change, but I'm not currently expecting that. So there you go. Uh, and then he also asked, can Microsoft remove the hinge gap in the Surface Book 3? Microsoft can do whatever they want. They made $8 billion in net income. They've got the money to figure it out. Uh, the question is, do they want to? Because they've kind of created a classic design, if you will. It's almost like a Porsche um, design where it's people recognize what it is with that teardrop shape. Um, could they do it? Absolutely. Will they do it? We'll find out. We'll find out. Uh, JLV632 says, Hi, Brad. I can't understand the, ne the neglect for the Surface Book, Surface Book 1 and Surface Book with performance base. Last firmware update came out in February of 2018, but I keep seeing Microsoft have firmware updates for the Laptop Pro and everything else. On one hand, it wouldn't surprise me if Microsoft were to set up the distance from the Skylake processor 
but that in the same process of driving for update three weeks ago being that we saw the book book one owners don't have dual uh, on-screen dial support and my performance base is under two year old is kind of odd for a premium device um i would definitely want to say they are abandoning surface book i don't have great insight into when they decide to patch firmwares for obviously if there's an issue um i i you got to remember that surface book one has some of the most updates ever for a microsoft device and so maybe they just don't need to yet i i don't know that's interesting i didn't know that the dial didn't work but to be honest a dial on that screen doesn't really all that useful um, at least in my opinion uh Riff Rifferty says, with the Surface Go now released, what should we expect from hardware release-wise from Microsoft this year? I would expect to see a lot of chip updates. I would grab your salsa, and Microsoft's going to bring a lot of new chips. That's that's kind of what I'm hearing right now. Granted, we're several months away, but that's what I'm hearing. Uh, da, 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 da. So, uh, Doug One says, with Microsoft's Strong emphasis on the enterprise market. Where does that leave the consumer? I, I've talked about this many times. So Microsoft has a, a lot of consumer plays. They're just not so obvious. Obviously, in the productivity sector uh, with OneNote and all that stuff, it's still a consumer -ish, but granted, more uh, office-ish type things. This thing right here. Microsoft's primary touch points with the consumer are Windows, Xbox, and Surface. That is how Microsoft connects with the consumer. Obviously, they also have a lot of other apps and services like the free Outlook, uh, OneDrive, and other Edge browser on multiple devices. Those are all kind of the touch points Microsoft is utilizing right now to connect with the consumer, and that, that that's it. Um, I'm sure I'm missing a couple other ones, but they make they Microsoft continues to make and always has made most of their money in the enterprise segment. So can just remember that. This isn't some like dramatic change. It's that they wanted to get in the consumer market heavier or more deeply um, but they failed to do so. But granted, Xbox has a pretty big penetration rate. Same with Surface. So it's not like they're completely out uh, in left field. Tourniquet says, I heard the Surface Go has a different keyboard connector. Yep, we talked about that at the beginning of the podcast. Is it still possible to connect a Surface Pro 3 keyboard to it? No, you cannot. Uh, also, is the Surface Go part of the always connect to PC thing, aka does it have very good standby battery life? I haven't had it long enough. Um, I would suspect that it has pretty good, but it's not... I, I don't know enough about the R or the Pentium chip because remember it's not ARM. So, uh, and what happened to Windows 10 Lean? Is it coming to market soon? I don't know a whole lot about Windows 10 Lean to be honest. Um, I think this is probably part of the, the Windows 10 Core OS update, the WC OS or whatever uh, it's called. I suspect it's part of that, but yeah. Uh, Poncelia says, given Microsoft has no compelling consumer services other than Xbox, is modern life a meaningless concept with to win back consumers. Why bother anyway since Microsoft is making so much money enterprise? You're right. Let's just shut all this shit down and just quit. Um, <laughs> people get real... I don't understand why everyone hates Microsoft's consumer strategy. You guys, they dumped $10 billion into Windows Phone and they got nothing. They dumped a whole bunch of money in the Surface Band or into Band. They got nothing. Uh, they've dumped a whole bunch of money into Surface and they've gotten somewhere. Microsoft just can't buy their way into a consumer market anymore. And so uh, modern life is just a rebranding of things they have. It, it's, it's just an, a different strategy and a more forward-looking strategy than they had previously. So keep that in mind um, as you kind of see these next couple announcements coming up. Uh, Peter K, or we already did that one. Neon Knight says, would love to see you guys do a compare to a Lenovo X1 Tablet Gen 3 versus Surface Pro. I don't have a Lenovo X1 Tablet Gen 3. Um, Paul might, so I can see if he will do that. And then Mike Farnha says, would Microsoft ever consider adding a virtualized install of Android in Windows? In the Andromeda type of device, it could run Windows when in large screen mode and Android and VM once folded. Thoughts? So there were some rumors and some insider conversations about actually having Andromeda run some sort of flavor, or yeah, Andromeda running some sort of flavor of Android. Uh, Microsoft already did a lot of work with Android virtualization. They actually did it so well uh, what was it called? Astoria, I believe. And it worked so well that Microsoft was afraid that it was going to cannibalize their own store efforts, so they stopped it. Um, I could see them trying to revive that for the Andromeda-type device to make sure that it has an app ecosystem when it launches. But it's back It's back in the hardware labs. It's no longer out in marketing and, um, and market-proving status. And so we'll see what happens. I, could I see them doing that? Possibly. 
they need some way to bridge that gap between pure mobile and to a desktop PC. And that is one option, although it gets a little more dicey because Microsoft doesn't own everything. And if they fork their version of Android, then they can't get into the Google Play Store, which becomes a challenge because then you gotta give it all your developers to port your stuff into your own Android app store, which is a big pain in the butt. So a um, lot of challenges there. So anyways, guys, uh, been a very surface-ish show. If you're new to the channel, this is kind of what I do every Friday, just kind of a recap, talk about what's going on, uh, a little bit of insights like Microsoft's October event. And so there you go, folks. Uh, that wraps it up for today. I hope you have a, yourself a wonderful weekend. We'll get you right back here next time on The Sam's Report.